Hello there, welcome back to another little episode of Strife's Talking Points, and today I'd like to cover the current rise in tensions in the Middle East, the escalation following the either attack or the damage occurring to two tankers in the Gulf of Oman in the Middle East. And first though, I'd like to say please like, share, comment, feel free to dislike the video. I just like to know what's going on with you guys, so just trying to have a conversation here. And to begin, latest Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says intelligence indicates that attacks on ships were carried out by Iran as part of a large campaign of escalating tensions in the region. He said the preferred response is still sanctions and diplomacy, but the U.S. will defend our interest in the Middle East. A spokesman for U.S. Central Command says 21 crew members rescued from the oil tanker Kokuka. Kukuka, courageous and are now on board U.S. Navy's USS Brainbridge following the explosion. Lieutenant Colonel Earl Brown says the U.S. Navy ship was in international waters in the Gulf of Oman near the courageous when it received a stress call about 6 a.m. local time. Burning says Bainbridge provided immediate assistance to the contagious courageous and its crew members and they abandoned ship. Uh, Secretary General Ahmad Abu Git told at a council meeting today on to council meeting Thursday on cooperation between the UN and the Arab League that some of the parties in our region are trying to instigate fires in our region and we must be aware of that. I believe they're referring directly back to Iran and the current escalation of tensions. Now this is from the Military Times. We're going to skip ahead. Real quick to a piece here. U.S. blames Iran for two attacks on tankers near Persian Gulf. You can immediately see that these are being listed as attacks, even though very little is known. However, uh, just to go through the article, Washington from the Associated Press, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said Thursday, the United States government blames Iran for the attacks on two oil tankers near the Persian Gulf casting it's, it as the latest in a series of provocative actions that have sharply raised tensions in the area. U.S. assessments of Iran's responsibility, which forced the evacuation of crews in international waters, was based part on intelligence as well as the expertise needed to carry out the operation, Pompeo told reporters in, in Washington. It was also based on a recent series of incidents in the region that the U.S. also blames on Iran, including a similar attack on tankers in May and the bombing of an oil pipeline in Saudi Arabia by Iranian-backed fighters. These, uh, Taken as a whole, these unprovoked attacks present a clear threat to international peace and security and a blatant assault on freedom of navigation and an unacceptable campaign of escalating tensions by Iran, Pompeo said. Now, of course, these are the U.S.-based um, sources, Boston Globe being this one and the Military Times and the other one. Let's slide outside of the typical. Let's go to RT. Iran shouldn't hastily be blamed for Gulf of Oman tankers incident Moscow. Moscow is warned against making rash conclusions in retaliation to the Gulf of Oman oil tanker explosions, saying the incident shouldn't be used to further heighten tensions which is exactly the opposite of what the U.S. is trying to do. Uh, I would like to use this opportunity to warn against to warn against hasty attempts to pin the blame on those who are unwanted by a number of well-known states. Russian Deputy Foreign Ministry, Sergei Rov, Sergei. Sergei then clarified his thoughts, saying, We were recently witnessing an escalating campaign of psychological and political and military pressure against Iran carried out by the U.S. and the allies in the region. Now that is a very simple article there. Earlier today, two oil tankers, of course, were hit. Uh, I was reading in another article where they believe one of these was a torpedo attack, quite possibly, and the other, just they believe they hit something. So there's very little known as of now. However, that's where we're at right now. This from Al Jazeera, the UN warns against Gulf confrontation after tankers damaged. The United Nations has warned a, the world cannot afford a major confrontation in the Gulf as international concerns grow over suspected attacks on commercial 
ships near the Strait of Hormuz. Now, again, suspected attacks. There is no evidence what these are. They are just being pushed out there as this is a fact. Iran did it. And, of course, other groups are saying, no, just wait for information. However, at our current stage, uh, it's very difficult for anyone to wait for anything. The reported attacks in the Gulf of Oman off the coast of Iran left one ship ablaze and both adrift, forcing scores of crew to abandon ship. They were the second in a month near the strategic strait of Hormuz, Hormuz a major waterway for oil supplies. Secretary of State Pompeo accused Iran of being behind the reported attacks, which, being a U.S. citizen and watching kind of how the U.S. reacts to things, I don't see any way they wouldn't blame Iran for this. It was in the Middle East, so Iran would be the culprit, or ISIS, depending on how far in they are. Now, to this, these tankers, one was going for Singapore, one was going for Japan. Here's the report from a uh, foreign prime minister of, the, of Iran. Reported attacks on Japanese, on Japan-related tankers occurred while PM Prime Minister Abe Shinzo was meeting with the Ayatollah for extensive and friendly talks. Suspicious doesn't begin to describe what likely transpired this morning. Iran's proposed regional dialogue forum is imperative. So during the prime minister and the Ayatollah's conversation, this is when the attacks happened. So it seems very... Uh, to me, as an outsider, it does seem suspicious that these attacks would be carried out against Japanese-based uh, tankers or a Japanese-based tanker or a tanker heading for them during this period. However, we have seen a shift uptick of, I believe it's been reported everywhere from 4 to 6% in the price of crude oil. Basically, that's what we're looking towards is oil is going up because now there's uncertainty in the region and this will drive up oil prices around the world. And the final part of this is actually touching back to the uh, second story here where similar attacks and the bombing of a Saudi pipeline by Iranian backfighters. Now, that, ref that is referring to a story here. Um, Going to scroll down just a little bit here to uh, Yemenis rebel groups as a group that must be internationally confronted and accused of being backed by Iran, Saudi's regional rival. Now, the U.S. and Saudi have invaded Yemen. They invaded Yemen to attempt to overthrow the, not overthrow the government, to, to crush any type of rebel presence in that nation, and it has been a huge humanitarian crisis around the world. You do not see that a lot in the U.S. media. It is not a big story for us. It is not something uh, that you talk about on mainstream media because that would deflect from the overall um, I believe the proper term to use is, is military industrial complex trying to produce more war, more conflict, more money for these companies, more um, conquest overall. It is a very sad state where the Saudi-backed people versus the Iranian-backed people, and that is basically to say the two very different, the two different religious groups, the Shia and the Sunni, all of these conflicts can be broke down over religious lines. It is very difficult being from the West to note how religion attacks or how religious groups would go like that strictly because we have had such a different take over the last few you know, couple hundred years in the West. Uh, but real quick, the Houthis, or who are at war with Saudi Arabia earlier Thursday, said earlier Thursday, they launched several drones targeting a vital Saudi installation without elaborating. They claimed responsibility for the pipeline attack in a comment broadcast by the Houthi military spokesman, Brigadier General Yahya Sari. In a statement carried out by the state run Saudi press, agen press agency, Al Fali called the pipeline attack cowardly, saying recent acts of sabotage against the kingdom were targeted not only Saudi Arabia, but also the safety of the world's energy supply and global economy. 
So Saudi invading Yemen is not a threat to the world. However, Yemen rebels fighting back against Saudi is a threat to the world. And you kind of see the the choices that the Western nations, the U.S. and others have made is to go with the oil and allow the wholesale killing of these other people just because it's not an issue because of oil. Oil is more important than people in some instances, and I really do wish the U.S. would pull out and figure out a different way to deal with this whole thing. Um, however, conspiratorially, it is very odd that Iran would attack a tanker related to the prime minister they're currently trying to cut deals with, who is a very staunch U.S. ally. And if they were able to cut a deal, then again, that would kind of reflect more towards the U.S. and Asia. But that's just my thoughts on the whole thing. Please let me know in the comments down below what you think. Please like, share. Feel free to dislike the video. I'm not in charge of you. I'm just trying to have a conversation. Thank you all for listening and have a great day.